Baisu inmates say they feel deprived of their voting rights. Sepuka Temu returns for Abau. And Pangu Party wants a coalition of game changers. This is National MTV News with Mary Batulo. A very good evening. Thank you for joining us for Friday's news. Prisoners at the Baisu Jail in Western Highlands Province and families of warders have missed out on voting this month. Only 200 ballot papers were provided to them during polling, with only a few warders voting. Our MTV News Mount Hagen crew travelled to Baisu Jail and spoke with the inmates and Baisu Jail Commander Timbi Kaugla. I suppose they have the figures. So, uh, like in Baisu last time, we did not really vote according to the names. We were given only 200 ballot papers. We have uh, 1,000, 2,000 plus people here in Baisu, including the prisoners as well. Under, under the law, the prisoners are supposed to uh, vote, but they did not uh, happen last time. Sepuka Temu has made history in Abao, retaining his seat as member for Abao for four consecutive terms. Sepuka reached absolute majority at 3 p.m. today after the 21st elimination. After polling 11,638 votes, surpassing the absolute majority mark by 952. His win is a plus for the People's National Congress Party. Accompanied by his wife, Lady Bernadette, Sepuka was declared at the Copiano Council Chamber by the Abao Returning Officer Lawrence Barrow. In his victory speech, Sepuka thanked the people of Abao for their support and asked for cooperation to advance the cause of Abao. Even a second, third or fourth term. But for the win that to me has been one of the easiest because we saw during declaration time and during campaign time that a lot of people came at the back of me and that now have demonstrated in the win that we have been now officially declared. And I believe the reason why people have supported me again is despite what people are saying that we have done nothing, actually we have done a lot in Abba. Many people forget the state of about before 2002. It was really bad. And for those of you who were five-year-olds then, who have now 10, 20, which is 15 and after, many of you young people don't remember how bad your district was. And many of you have commented in the media on the saying that I have never done anything. But you, for, you didn't know how bad Abba was. And so I forgive you for all the bad comments that you have made. But I invite you to accept the people's verdict and join me in advancing the cause of our people and allow me to go to parliament as you have allowed now to serve not only Abba, but serve our beautiful country. Our nation needs good, quality, honest, reliable, wise, knowledgeable leaders. PNG National Party leader Karenga Kua has retained his seat. Mr. Poe was declared at 3 p.m. this afternoon at the Dixon Oval in Kundiawa today. He polled 21,114 votes after the 33rd exclusion. Millie Rex Kiage finished second, polling 8,046, and Kyle, Carl Aina finished third. Mr. Kua was declared by Sinasine Yongomol returning officer Peter Nelkare. Two major parties in the 2017 national election have shown no attempts to form a coalition government. National Alliance Party President and Member-Elect for Namatanai, Walter Schnobelt, told MTV's Your Vote program that NA is not considering teaming up with the People's National Congress. The remarks have been welcomed by PNC strongman James Marape. Speaking this week on MTV's 2017 Your Vote program, the NA president said NA is eyeing other coalition parties, including independents. He says the NA team is vying to form government with party leader Patrick Pruitt as the candidate for the prime minister's seat. Led by Patrick Pruitt as our um, alternate prime minister. Okay. And we're trying in our master's numbers to make that happen. Okay. So we're talking to everybody. We're talking to 20 independent candidates. We're talking to Pangu right now. Yesterday I just got off the phone with um, Sam. We're talking to URP. 
we're talking to other parties who, who just have one candidate um, that have won. So we, we're going we're gonna to form this grand coalition party to, to be the alternative government right now. Last night, re-elected Taripuri MP and PNC stalwart James Marape welcomed the remarks stating PNC will follow normal processes to get the numbers and form the 10th government. But for us as a People's National Congress Party, we will go by the rules. If our party does uh, get invitation to form government by virtue of fact that we return more in these elections, then we will also look out for like-minded groupings, whether they are political parties or independents. Uh, basically, the key structure of our government remains the same. As of 10 a.m. this morning, the sitting People's National Congress is comfortably leading in the party race with 10 declared MPs. Second place is rival Pangu with five and National Alliance four. PPP saw its first declared seat yesterday by Emil Tamur in the Kokopo Open, despite losing party leader Ben Micah to NA candidate Ian Lingstaki. Pangu has been quiet following five victories in Morobe and is yet to make a statement about its coalition intentions. But leaders PNC are optimistic it will have the numbers when it goes into camp in Alatau. We are confident that numbers speak for themselves and we will move into camp this coming Sunday in Alatau. We will review our first okay. Alatau Accord and mm -hmm. we will see what we've delivered and we will build on our platform for the next five years in the second Alatau Accord that our party as well as like-minded political parties and independents. So far, 26 out of 89 candidates have been declared. Jack Lapave, Jr. National, MTV News. Meanwhile, Pango Party leader and re-elected Wau Bulolo MP Sam Basil wants a coalition of game changers to redirect Papua New Guinea. And Basil, with Pango Party's newly elected members of parliament from Morabe province, have convened for the Eastern Camp in Goroka, Eastern Highlands province, to set up the power sh sharing block. Basil says their position is clear and are happy to form a coalition government. All other newly elected members of parliament have been invited to strengthen the power sharing block to negotiate a political outcome. Scrutineers at the Wabe Counting Centre in Enga province have destroyed election materials including ballot boxes and papers this morning. This comes after their grievances were not properly addressed by election officials on the ground. Security personnel apprehended at least 35 scrutineers at 11 a.m. today. Counting for the lay open seat continued with exclusions today. Independent candidate John Russell maintains his lead after exclusion 16, followed by Sunagara Bogan. In the Morabe Regional, Pangu Party's Ginson Saono is leading after count 181. Ballot boxes from Nawai, Kabum and Makam districts are yet to be counted. The exclusion process for the lay open seat continued today. 16 candidates have already been excluded. After the 16th exclusion, independent candidate John Rosso kept his lead. Seda Gorobogan follows with 5,395 and Valentine Buri with 2,283. Although the sitting member Lujaya Kuza managed to gain votes after exclusions, she still trails with 800 below the top 10 candidates. In the Morabe Regional, 181 ballot boxes have already been counted. Pangus Ginsen Saonu now leads with more than 17,000 votes. Former Governor Luther Wenge maintains second and independent candidate Kemas Tomala on third. The incumbent Kelly Naru has been threading on fourth place after several counts. Lucy Kopana, National MTV News, Lay. While eliminations continue, Deputy Election Manager in Ley has advised polling teams that cash payments will be made to members who have not been paid their allowances. Frida Joseph met with the polling officials who were frustrated by the delays. While counting has not been disrupted, polling officials said the delays are unacceptable. Overall, Morbe provinces managed the issue of allowances relatively well. But yesterday, frustrations over the delays boiled over and an assistant returning officer was assaulted. This morning, members of polling and counting teams assembled outside the Sir Ignatius Kilage Stadium to get an explanation from the election manager and the returning officer for lay. The allowance delays have been a troublesome point for many counting centers all over the country. Since now, Mibla stopped three weeks here. Mibla waiting payment, Mibla waiting for account, Mibla waiting for account. My polling officers now, they're giving pressure also. 
to me. Then at the Lay District office, yeah, officials were told account details provided were either invalid or dormant. That was the other cause of the delays. For some teams, cash payments will be made this week once money is transferred from Port Moresby. Anytime within the next three days now, from today I'm traveling in, but so to me, I'm going to make the payments to the club, and I'm going to make the payments to the club, and I'm going to make the payments to the club. The delay in the payment of allowances also affected the start of counting in Finchafen, Kabum, Nawaib, and Huon. Scott Waide, National MTV News. Late. Counting officials from Mosby Northeast have protested outside the gates to the Papua New Guinea Electoral Commission office demanding their outstanding allowances. They blocked off the front gate at 10 a.m. this morning while Electoral Commissioner Patilius Kamato was at Government House requesting for an extension to counting for the NCD and other delayed electorates. Meantime, Kairukuhiri counting did not proceed today after counting officials went on strike yesterday. In Port Moresby, counting has stopped completely in major counting centers. Moresby Northeast officials protested outside the Electoral Commission from noon till the afternoon, demanding their outstanding allowances. They want their allowances paid by the Electoral Commission. Some claim they've been drinking water from the public toilet. Returning officer Thomas Ronga was forced to ask for answers from the Electoral Commission. And I will get your uh, polling allowances done myself with my team. Huh? Yes. The only thing I can guarantee you now, afternoon, allowance people are counting for 14 days will be paid this afternoon. All the time must come up the polling booth in your teams. Five and six all yet, nine and twelve all yet. I will pay you cash this afternoon. The commission has said it has 78 million kina and it isn't broke. They said today that counting and polling officials gave invalid account numbers, so money can't be paid. The EC also said there are cases where money is being paid into one account for several people, and one person walks off with the sum. In Ley and other parts of the country, there are also similar problems. Officials going on strike for their outstanding allowances. But in Port Mosby, the Kairukuhiri Counting Center at the Bomana Correctional Service Training College, officials haven't counted since yesterday. Scrutineers are now impatient. They want the elimination process to begin. They too have their own issues. So things like ballot papers that do not have Dates. original signatures mm -hmm. of assistant polling officers or polling officers, and just marked by initial, initial. APOs, yeah. POs, should be declared invalid In and problem. set aside. Today, the Central Provincial Administrator, Gay Raga, addressed them, saying he'll talk to the Electoral Commissioner, Patilius Gamato. We have resolved that issue now, so because uh, I'm taking it on myself as the Administrator to take a, a visit to the Electoral Commission headquarters to follow up those uh, outstanding allowances which are yet to be paid. Counting for the Goilala Open at the Gordon's Police Barracks and the Rita Flynn Courts for the NCD Regional and Mosby Northwest has also seen problems. One of them, outstanding allowances. Some security personnel who can't speak on camera are among them. But there has been progress at Mari Barracks. Central Regional Quality Checks happened today. Abao and Rigo electorates have been completed. Officials are now waiting for the Kairuku Hiri and Goilala ballot papers. Elimination should start on Sunday. Bethany Hariman, National MTV News. To more details of our lead story tonight, prisoners at Baisu in the Western Highlands are now saying they were deprived their right to vote. The prisoners said they felt betrayed by the Electoral Commission for not being given chance to express their democratic rights to elect their leaders. Paisu Jail Commander Timbi Kauga says even though they were given 200 ballot papers, they have been intimidated and threatened by the nearby community. I appealed to the Electoral Commission to have the ID system in place so that next, next elections in 2020 we're supposed to have the ID system in place so that people should not be intimidated or people suppose should not be uh, forced through the elections. Uh, I appeal to the government of Papua New Guinea 
at the Electoral Commission to have the ID system in place so that we vote uh, through the uh, ID system that, uh, that's supposed to be in place. What the prisoners and the warders want is for the Electoral Commission to have a working system like the National Identification Card so that PNG can have a fair election. Baisu Jail has at least 1,500 eligible voters, both from the prison and the families of the warders. The prisoners felt bad when they missed out on voting and urged the Electoral Commission not to repeat this in the next national election. Now coming election from 2022, meeting by one can also more by different degree. Or through the Electoral Commission meeting by also in a previous way by Milo Karabus by vote now. All voters now, all families do by vote. Or no good one look and say, all same by come up now. And people got right to vote now by representing parliament law, Karim or Waribu Mibla. Time you may calculate in Godan or Sally Molisla, 200 ballot papers come. And simply minimum same failure and stop along the sampler. Where day one time only walk in this common role. Have day. Only no being fully carrying out duties law and then calculating. Every single bit from the gate up, you go inside the area. A female prisoner, Lillian Mark, served almost seven years in prison. She reiterated what the other inmates said, saying it has deprived their rights to vote their leaders, even though many of their rights are limited. So I'm on the people something we can as now member or leader by come up logo making me plan parliament. I'm kind of a mebla me plan or make him a choice but me plan as a leader by going long end. So I'm on the some I'm on something in the country where he must get some improvement must come up with slah. This issue has raised concerns for the national government to have a working system in place so the people will not miss out in the coming elections. Those who missed out have nothing to do but to wait till 2022 to vote again. Vasinata Yama, National MTV News, Mount Hagen. We continue with National MTV News after these messages with more election counting updates from right across the country. Don't go away. Welcome back to National MTV News. Now, as of 3 p.m. this afternoon, there has been one more declaration, and that is for Abao Open in Central Province for Setpuka Temo. Now, this brings the total number of declared seats to 28. Now, here is, is how the political parties stand. The PNC party has 11 declared candidates. They are James Marape for Tari Pori, Jason Chechenko for Mosby South, Peter O'Neill for Yalibu Pangia, Charlie Benjamin for Manus Regional, Job Pomat for Manos Open, Stephen Davis for Essa Ala, Elias Kapavore, Pomio Open, Charles Abel, Alotau Open, Solon Mirsim, Telephone Open, Kompiam Ambum, John Pundari, and the latest edition, Sepuka Temu for Abao Open. Pangu Party has five declared candidates so far. They are Connie Iguan for Makam, Sam Basil for Bulolo, Thomas Pelika for Menyamia, Dr. Kobe Bomareo for Tewai Siasi, Finn Chaffin's new member, Rainbow Paita. The National Alliance Party has four declared members. They are Walter Schnobel for Namatanai Open, Timothy Masu for South Bougainville, Ian Linkstaki for KVN Open, Joe Sungi for Nuku Open. The PNG National Party have had their first member elected. He's Kerenga Kua for Sinasin Yongomul. He retains his seat there. Two independents have been elected so far. They are Petrus Thomas for Koroba Lake Kopiago and Manase Makiba for Komo Magarima. Now the minor parties of Melanesian Liberal Party, Christian Democratic Party, United Resource Party, Coalition for Reform Party and the People's Progress Party have a member each. They are represented by the white bar on your screen. We continue our look at results from around the country and for the Rigo Open, the progressive results there after the 14th exclusion, Anopala 4,914. Lekwaguria 3,748, Turai Elemi 3,706. Kairukuhiri Open after count 39, Peter Isuaimo 12,904, Paru Aihi 10,049, Stephen Manai 6,929. 
to counting for Boilala Open after count 35, William Sam 5,097, Alex Robert 2,284, Bruce Mamando 2,206. To counting in the Gulf Province and for Kerama Open after count 39, Richard Mendani 7,298, Thomas Opa 4,633, Nixon Lime 3,410. To counting for Kikori Open after count 19, Soroy Ewe 3,315, Mark Maipakai 1,777, Lester Sauka 1,344. To counting in Northern Province for the Northern Regional Seat after count 52, Gary Jufa 32,413, Jean Pakop 6,640, David Arore 5,421. To counting in Medang Province and for the Medang Regional Seat after count 54, Pangu Party candidate Jerry Singerok is now in the lead 20,439 just ahead of National Alliance candidate James Yali, 20,042, Peter Yama, 18,923. To counting for Raikos after count 32, Peter Sapir, 6,433, Edwin Buffet, 3,960, James Gellack, 3,294. To counting for Usino Bundi Open after count 29, Jimmy Uguro 3,275, Vincent Kumura 2,530, and sitting MP Anton Yagama 2,475. Counting for most districts in East Sipic Province are into the eliminations after quality checks were made yesterday. For WIWAC Open, the first six eliminations were carried out today with National Alliance candidate and sitting member Jim Simitab sitting at first place with 5,430 votes. For the regional seat, quality checks have been done on two districts with another National Alliance candidate, Alan Bird, leading with 22,268 votes as of 1 p.m. this afternoon. Stanley Over Jr. with this update from WIWAC. Ethic Kindly Teachers College counting for the WIWEC Open is progressing well after primary counts ended on Wednesday. The returning officer for the WIWEC Open says over 34,000 formal ballot papers have been collected. However, with no candidates reaching the absolute majority of 16,000 plus one, they have moved into eliminations. Uh, we just had uh, our quality check done yesterday. Now we are going over to uh, exclusion. And during the exclusion, we are also doing the um, elimination. So wherever the candidates uh, scored, uh, uh, scored low, we have to eliminate them. This is what we are doing. So we are Mr. Ula Papi confirmed that by Sunday, a declaration for the WIWEC Open should be made. Of course, we are going uh, a little bit faster than... Uh, during our quality check because there were a lot of students raising a complaint trying to know the kind of um, ballot papers that we have treated them as formal and informal all this kind of thing so uh, so far we we did it good and uh, we're expecting to declare the member of parliament probably by uh, uh, sunday hopefully for the other five districts amputi drekekia and yangoro sausia are set to declare a winner by tomorrow while Maprik, Wasaragawi and Engoram are into quality checks. For the regional seat, quality checks from the Wasaragawi electorate have been completed with boxes from Ambunti started checks this morning. A declaration is expected to be made by Sunday. Stanley Over Jr., National MTV News, WIWEC. And we continue our look at progressive results from around the country and we stay in East Sipic province and we take a look at the progressive results for WIWAC Open after the sixth exclusion. Jim Simitam, 5,430. Kevin Isufu, 4,386. Sylvester Pokajam, 4,114. 
over to West Sepik province and for the West Sepik regional seat after count 33, Tony Wo Wo 11,240, Greg Kapanombo 6,222, Simon Solo 3,707. To counting in Southern Highlands province and for the Southern Highlands regional seat after count 209, William Poe 40,309, Joe Cobalt, 25,624, Jerry Kiwai, 22,838. Kagua Erave, after count 87, Maino Pano, 6,433, James Laguerre, 6,380, Komeali Ropa, 5,612. To counting for Mendy Open after count 126, Michael Nali 17,116, sitting MP De Kewanu 13,812, and former Mendy MP Isaac Joseph 13,067. To West New Britain province now, and for the West New Britain regional seat after the seventh exclusion, Sasindran Mutuvel 35,643. Chris Lagisa, 19,674. William Gary, 9,443. Two counting for Talasia Open and after the 13th exclusion, Francis Manake, 11,171. Sitting MP Francis Maros, 10,900. And Freddie Kumai, 6,821. The absolute majority for Talasia is 33,337. To East New Britain province and all eyes are now on Sir Leo Dion and former Gazelle MP Naki Kuskonga as counting for East New Britain Regional goes through the last elimination count. As of 5 p.m. this afternoon, Mr. Konga has taken over from Sir Leo Dion to lead the East New Britain Regional count. Mr. Konga registered 3,738 votes in elimination count 16, pushing his tally count to 23,124. Sir Leo Dion has dropped to the second place with 22,937 votes. After elimination count 16, Levi Orong was eliminated after he polled only 19,550. The final elimination count is in progress and it will determine who wins the regional seat. This declaration is expected to happen later this evening. And as mentioned, the East New Britain Regional results after elimination 16, Naki Kuskonga of the People's Progress Party, 23,124, just ahead of PNC candidate and sitting governor, Celio Dion. To New Island and the New Island Regional seat is expected to be, clear, to be declared this evening as well, with three candidates left. Sitting Governor and founder of People's Progress Party, Sir Julius Chan, leads with a 1,800 plus margin, with 23,883, while National Alliance's candidate Michael Singan is trailing second, 22,144. Third is Moses Makis with 4,926, with the absolute majority plus one standing at 27,541. Declaration for the regional seat is expected to be made tonight at the Peter Torot Counting Center in Kaviang. To counting in the autonomous, or rather, for the New Island regional seat, as mentioned, Sir Julius Chan in the lead 23,883, ahead of Michael Singer 22,144, Moses Marquez 4,926. And to North Bougainville counting, William Nakin is in the lead 5,478, Lauta Atoy 4,870, Chris Siriosi 4,354, that is after exclusion number 18. To counting for Central Bougainville after exclusion 17, Sam Akoitai 6,512, Father Simon Dumarino 6,107, sitting MP Jimmy Miring Toro 4,706. And after all that, we take a look at the finance news. The Kino closed unchanged at 0.3145 US dollars in the interbank market. 
At Bank South Pacific, your Kino was buying 0.307 US dollars, 0.3830 Australian dollars, 0.2611 Euro, and 34.03 Japanese yen. Looking at commodity prices at New York closed, gold and cocoa closed higher, coffee and copper closed the day lower. Palm oil closed unchanged, crude oil is trading higher, and copper closed the day lower. And on the stock markets, the Dow Jones closed at 28 points lower, the SX closed at 38 points lower, and the All Ordinary is closed 34 points lower. You're with National MTV News. We'll have more when we come back. Welcome back to National MTV News. The Board of Mineral Resources Authority, MRA, has a new chairman. He is Muje Wera, a career mining company executive who is currently the Deputy Chief Executive Officer of Octedi Mine. Mr. Wera was elected by the MRA board members during a board meeting last week. He replaces Robin Moaina, who has served as board chairman for the last 10 years. In his acceptance speech, Chairman Wera thanked the board for the confidence in appointing him as chairman. He said his main priority would be to continue to engage with all stakeholders to improve MRA's service delivery to industry, government and landowners. Turning overseas now, Israeli police are barring men under the age of 50 from entering the old city for prayer. CNN with this developing story. There was that deadly attack against two Israeli police officers by three Arab Israeli men. Well, we saw this area right up here. This is Lion's Gate, and this is one of the areas that leads to the Temple Mount, also known to Muslims as the Noble Sanctuary. Uh, that area was closed off uh, for uh, over a day. And then when the police reopened it, they had these metal detectors. And that's what has angered people here. There are many people refusing to go through it. The WAC, which is a Jordanian uh, government agency which administers the noble sanctuary, has said that they aren't going to pass through them. And that really has been one of the issues that has sparked this, re this recent round of violence. And just here... Earlier this morning, there were protests, and George, we're expecting more of those protests today. And just to show you again, you have police right here who are checking people's IDs to go up to Lion's Gate, to go to uh, the Temple Mount, the Noble Sanctuary for prayer. But also down here, you can see there's also more police. Uh, there's uh, more uh, these barricades, these barriers, and there's just all over this area they're checking people's ids and what we're hearing from the police is they don't want any really large gatherings of people praying which then t usually turns into protests they want to compartmentalize this day uh, to make sure that they are able to manage it so that's going to be the real test for police as for people coming to protest we're hearing that mosques around jerusalem are shutting their doors today encouraging people to come here to pray uh, to show their support for this ongoing situation. And you're with the National MTV News. Up next, we'll have some sporting updates in Trukai Sports. Trukai Sports. Welcome to Trukai Sports. We begin with boxing. Preparations for the boxing tournament are well underway for pro boxers Elias Bassa and kickboxing champion Nelson Sampson. The tournament organized by PNG Professional Boxing Association is set to ignite the rivalry of boxers and kickboxers assembling in the ring for an ultimate showdown. Moving on into the autonomous region of Bougainville, the Bougainville Rugby Club captains have become ambassadors for peace and the sustainable development goals in their new role, supported by the Bougainville Rugby Union Club. Ambassadors will use sports as a platform to raise awareness of peace and the SDGs are called to action to end poverty, protect the planet and ensure prosperity for all Bougainvillians by 2030. This initiative was made possible with a partnership between the Bougainville Rugby Union Club, Autonomous Bougainville Government and the United Nations Development Programme. Bougainville Rugby Union Manager Kelly Havara welcomed the partnership aimed to help get youths involved in sport and avoid social-related problems such as alcohol and drugs. 
to the NRL and the Brisbane Broncos thrashed the Canterbury Bulldogs 34 points to 12 at Suncorp Stadium last night. The Broncos trailed 6-0 in the first 20 minutes but picked up to run in three tries to take the lead at halftime. The Broncos carried on the dominance to the second half, running away with another four tries after the win. The Broncos now sit second on the NRL ladder. And we'll have more Trukai Sports after these messages. Trukai Sports. Welcome back to Trukai Sports to Cycling and Frenchman Warren Bagwil produced a stunning burst of speed on Thursday to climb the brutal 14-kilometer Col des to claim victory on stage 18 of the 21-stage race as Bagwil, wearing the polka dot jersey of best climber, worked his way past rivals to the summit. Another battle was playing out behind him. Tour de France leader Chris Froome and his Sky teammate outmaneuvered attacks by Frenchman Romain Bardet and his AG2R team and other rivals for overall honors. Froome began the final day of climbing in the Alps with a 27 second lead over Bardet and Grigoberto Uran. The AG2R team tried to push the pace of the climb and drop Froome and his team Sky teammates out. For a while, rivals Froome. Uran, Romain Bardet plus Tony Gallopin rode together, with Froome stopping an attempt by Bardet to ride away. Then it was Froome who attacked on a flat section and opened up a large gap on Bardet and Uran until the pair reeled him back just as he was reunited with his teammates. Baguil, however, crossed the finish line, which was a summit finish for the first time in tour history. Froome now leads Bardet by 23 seconds, with Uran now 29 seconds behind. Afterwards, Froome said he had hoped to make up more time on Uran, whom he regards as his main rival because of his time trialing performance. The day's stage is a relatively straightforward 222 km ride south towards the coast before tomorrow's trial in Marseille, where Froome is likely to extend his lead over his rivals for the yellow jersey and may take his fourth title. Jeremy Mogi. National TV Sports. Liverpool manager Jürgen Klopp showcased his talents away from soccer on Thursday at a Hong Kong kitchen. Klopp, donning a chef's hat, joined several young locals in producing a range of dishes. Klopp chopped vegetables and sliced meat before tasting the dishes as he joked with the others. Liverpool are in Hong Kong as part of the Premier League Asia Trophy Tournament. The team beat Crystal Palace 2-0 on Wednesday to make the final against Leicester City on Saturday. The Foxes defeated West Bromwich Albion in a penalty shootout to make the finals. Don't go away, we'll have your weather details for Saturday after these messages. True Kai Sports. The weather details are proudly brought to you by Dulux Weather Shield. With doing with Dulux. Here's a look at your weather for Saturday in the southern region. Port Moresby, an evening shower or two with a top of 31, a low of 23. Evening showers expected in Daru and Kerma as well, a top of 31 there. Fine, although cloudy weather for Alotau, a top of 31. Some showers expected in Popendeta, a top of 31. To the Momasi region, Leh and Madang, you can expect some brief showers. Rain and showers, showers in Wau, brief showers in Wewek and Vanimore, some showers in Medang. To the New Guinea Islands region, the occasional shower for Lorengau, some showers in Kavia and Kokopo and Rabaul, as well as in Kimbe, a few showers in Buka with a top of 30. And finally to the Highlands region, Mount Hagen, Goroka, Kondiawa, Mendi and Wabeg. You can expect some showers on Saturday as well as morning fog. The weather details are proudly brought to you by Dulux Weather Shield with Doing with Dulux. And that's the new sports and weather for today, Friday, the 21st of July, 2017. On behalf of the MTV News team, you have a pleasant weekend. Good night. <laughs>